Hey y'all, so I went and saw the new Exorcist film last night, uh, David Gordon Green's Exorcist, or The Exorcist Believer. Um, I'm up here in my studio <clears throat> in Nashville, and uh, just popped in here nice and quiet, thought I'd record this video about the movie. Um, I think the last video I did about a movie, I said I was going to do more of these, and I am planning to do that. Actually, this video, um, if, if you see a poster of John Coltrane in the background, it's because I got lazy. Uh, it actually kind of looks kind of cool, but uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with uh, replacing the background with like a cool background, and uh, I've actually got my setup up here in the studio where I can record my auto through a, through a much better microphone and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing some upgrading of these things, but right now I'm just being kind of lazy and just take a minute to do this. I, I got an assignment from an editor of mine to publish a review about the movie today. I wasn't planning on doing that. Um, but I was happy to, I was, I was glad to have the opportunity. Actually, I really enjoyed the movie and it was fun to actually sit down and write my thoughts out before I got on here to talk to all y'all. But it took up uh, the time when I was going to be doing this earlier, so I had bigger ambitions for my video today, but uh, um, but actual work got in the way, so I was happy to have that happen. But um, I went and saw the film last night. It, we, uh, it's I'm recording this on Wednesday, and um, on Tuesday evening, uh, they had a media preview um, here in Nashville for the new uh, Exorcist film. Um, uh, David Gordon Green's an interesting guy. He made some really sort of quiet dramas. Um, he, I want to say David Gordon Green, uh, I, I don't remember where, where exactly he was born, Arkansas. And then he, uh, went to Texas. He graduated from UT. Um, and then he went to North Carolina and now he's living in South Carolina so a, a lot of his movies are these sort of quiet dramas. I think many of them actually take place here in the South and um, uh, and the Southwest, perhaps. I've seen some of the earlier movies. Um, uh, uh, he made that movie, uh, Joe, with um, Nicolas Cage. Um, the Angels, what's the name of that movie? There's a movie he did with Sam Rockwell. That's good. I should be doing a better job of recalling all these, but I'm, I'm kind of just all day long. I've just been sort of thought, thinking about him as a horror filmmaker because he he pivoted from these sort of quiet rural dramas. It's kind of a weird trajectory. And he ends up making comedy movies. Right. So he made um, uh, Pineapple Express, for instance. Right. I believe I think that's true. I'm just going to say that's for real. I'm going to say that's true. Um, and he sort of, and I think that was the beginning of him teaming up with Danny McBride. And him and Danny McBride have worked on a bunch of Danny McBride's TV shows and things. And uh, he and Danny McBride and some other people, I'm, uh, there's other writers who are credited with these films, but but primarily it's it's... It's Green and Danny McBride who rebooted the the Halloween franchise um, with the recent movies that they did with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, last Halloween, a year ago, uh, was the last installment of, of that franchise, of that trilogy in the Halloween franchise. Uh, they came out with Halloween Ends, and um, that movie, and really all the Halloween movies he made are kind of divisive. Um, and especially Halloween ends, I think it really was a thing where people were, um, you know, there's people on Twitter today because the actually Halloween ends is, was trending at this moment that I'm on here making this video because there's people fighting over, you know, primarily critics, I guess, because the movie doesn't come out for, for another couple of days. It comes out this Friday, the Exorcist film. And there's people fighting about, you know, uh, about the new Exorcist movie. And it's it's interesting because the camps have sort of divided themselves into the people who love Halloween Ends and the people who hate it. And like there's people who loved Halloween Ends who are seeing these bad reviews come through for the Exorcist film 
and they're excited because they think those people are the people who hated Halloween ends and that they'll love the new Exorcist film as a result. It's hard to say. I mean, like today is the, the embargo was lifted this morning at 10 a.m. And right now there was like last time I looked, there was like 72 reviews have been counted on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, obviously, there's no audience score yet because there, there's no general audience for the movie until Friday. Um, but uh, the critics, there was like 72 reviews and it's like 26 percent positive which is of course you know like a big green splat of, of a number <laughs> it's kind of funny because i often find myself liking movies and then being a little puzzled when i realize that almost every other critic doesn't like them um but uh but it, that, but that's okay um I, I was kind of okay with the halloween films i write about that a bit in this piece that i did for the nashville scene which i think will actually be up tomorrow morning um, it's just a short review. It's about 400, 500 words. Uh, that, that was all really that, that we could do. The Nashville scene does a best of, uh, issue every year and we're right up against that deadline. So I was, I was happy to get even a short review put together for this one. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was excited about the Halloween franchise being rebooted um, especially by David Gordon Green, because I thought, you know, he had some, I just thought he was interesting as a filmmaker and I was really kind of tracking down like things that he had done, or if I saw he had done something that I was more interested in it. So when he suddenly was going to do a Halloween trilogy, I was like, huh, okay. Um, I really liked Rob Zombie's, uh, two Halloween films a lot. So, um, so I'm, 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 I, I see the potential of, of these old legacy franchises, especially in the, in various genres, you know, the, the prey film, the predator franchise movie that came out, uh, last year, I believe it might've been a year before that, but I think it was last year. Um, uh, I think it just went straight to prime or Netflix, whoever, whoever had, uh, done the movie. I don't think it actually had a theatrical release, which was terrible because that movie was so good. Um, and so, so I was, I was excited when David Gordon Green took over Halloween, especially because Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back, uh, not just like as a cameo or something, but was like literally like the central character in those films. And, um, and that was exciting, you know, and, uh, and by the time Halloween kills came out last Halloween, um, I didn't even see it. Like I didn't even go to the theater. I think I probably had an opportunity to see a preview. Maybe something came up and I wasn't able to go. Uh, but regardless, you know, I didn't, I didn't see that movie in the theaters because I just didn't have that much enthusiasm for that, that, um, that run of Halloween films, uh, even though I started strong, I really wanted it to be great. Um, I think for me, the problem with the Halloween films is that Danny McBride and, and Green kind of, they, by actually, I hate to say this because the thing that made me excited about the movie was kind of the thing that I ended up not liking about those movies. Um, but the way that they brought Jamie Lee Curtis's, um, uh, character back in like the character arc of her going from like this traumatized, you know, young woman in, in the original films. And then, uh, and then now we catch up with her all these years later and like, w what kind of person would she be now? Um, I don't know if, if they necessarily got that wrong, but it just wasn't very interesting to me, the character that they had developed for her at that point. Um, and, or Jamie Lee Curtis just wasn't very well suited to playing that kind of character. It, it, it might've been a combination of those things, but I found it all to be, I found, I found those movies to be rather unbelievable. I just didn't ever really believe Jamie Lee Curtis as this like hard as nails, you know, uh, you know, whatever she was supposed to be ultimately like this crusading Avenger or something. I don't know, man. I just, I didn't buy, I didn't buy her in those movies and it made it hard to enjoy it because that was one of the main things I was looking forward to. Um, uh, and it wasn't really, I don't really think it was an acting problem and not even necessarily a writing problem in terms of, you know, the way those movies were put together or the dialogue or something like that. It was really more just the, the whole concept of, 
Jamie Lee Curtis becomes this kind of person, it's like, okay, I mean, I can see that logically, but I, I, I don't care about her being that kind of person. So I didn't like those movies very much. And I think one of the things that the Exorcist movies get right, or the Exorcist movie, there's going to be three of them, by the way, if this one doesn't just completely bomb, there's supposed to be three of them. Like they're, they're planning on doing a trilogy of these as well. Um, uh, but one of the things I think this movie gets right better is that gets right better. The, one of the things this movie does better than the Halloween films is I think their sort of reboot of the exorcist is, um, uh, it's, it's a lot more removed from the original story. It's not like they go back and they find Linda Blair and they say, okay, where would Reagan McNeil be? Now, after having survived the possession back in 1973, like, where would she be now? And let's catch up with her now, and then we'll make an, some kind of movie based on her as this, uh, you know, uh, aging Gen X lady, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, d I just, I don't think that would have worked as well. Maybe it would have. But, um, uh, but the, luckily, they didn't do that. Uh, instead... They make a movie about modern times, two young girls. Uh, they're both about Reagan's age. They're both like supposed to be 12, I think, in the film, which I think is the same age that she was in The Exorcist, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, adolescent, you know, young teenager, preteen kind of thing. Uh, middle schoolers, essentially. Is the, I, I peg them to be about in seventh grade. Um, and the two girls go, uh, well, let me see. Uh, one of the girls, Angela, is um, lives with her dad, who's a widow, er, widow, widower, and um, uh, and and she's she never met her mother. Her mother died when she was born, and there's information about that at the very beginning of the film, so you can you can see that for yourself. Um, and her little friend in school is this girl named Catherine, who. Uh, is uh uh has a family and, and siblings and belongs to a church and all this stuff has a very different kind of life than 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 angela does who's just like at home with her dad and her dad's kind of like overly protective because of the fact that that you know that because of things things around the loss of his wife etc and so uh so um she and Catherine go out in the woods to do like a little kid magic ritual to try to um, uh, get in contact with Angela's mother. And uh, three days later, um, this boy on a farm discovers these two barefoot girls in the corner of uh, his family's barn. And uh, in the meantime, the entire little town has gone bananas looking for these girls, right? And the families have gotten to know each other. Uh, all of the sort of extended community around the families of the girls have sort of come out of the woodwork to help in any way they can, as, as you see them do in these real-life situations where there's a young child miss missing. Um, and um, uh, in particular... It's the sort of religious communities around these people kind of come out of the woodwork and and sort of reveal themselves to be coming from these different places of spiritual faith of one kind or another. Um, uh, you know, in response to this, uh, what they think is this tragedy, because everybody starts to think these girls must certainly be be dead or something. You know, something awful has happened. And of course, something awful has happened, but it's it's not what they imagine. Um, so they find the girls, and then very soon after that, the girls are, don't seem to be so good. <laughs> Seems like something's wrong with the girls. And uh, and this this community, you know, that's sort of become bonded over um, this period of, of loss, of when they thought they were lo lost the girls, um, they, they all sort of team up. And uh, with their own sort of takes on their spiritual faith, they do war with this uh, devil 
that seems to be trying to uh, kill these young people. So, uh, so if that sounds a little bit <laughs> like the first movie, it's because it is a little bit like the first movie. Again, the girls are about the same age as Reagan. This time there's two instead of one. Um, you know, uh, there's people in the community who are called upon to battle this demon, even though for different reasons, they've had their own crises of faith over the years. Um, uh, there's, uh, the, all of that is part of the original exorcist. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen the original exorcist, by the way, you got to see that you got to see it. You don't, you don't have to see it to enjoy this movie, but but come on, you got to see The Exorcist. It's incredible. If you haven't watched it in a while, you might want to give it another look because I think it would I think it would have been, you know, just for me as somebody who's actually going to talk to people like y'all and publish stuff about this, it would have been uh, a little bit helpful. I could I I did a bunch of research today to get caught up on all the similarities between the original and this one, and it's it's you know there's there's lots of little details and stuff. There's lots of there's a moment in the original. Um, well, there's lots of little details, you know, um, that are borrowed, you know, from the first movie and kind of given a new spin. You know what I mean? Like in the first movie, Reagan is playing with a Ouija board that she found, you know, and in this film, these girls are sort of like making up this weird ritual that they think will help her get in touch with her mother, you know? So it's, it's the same thing, but it's, it's spun differently and it's got different look and a different feel. Um, uh, and there's a lot of that in this movie, you know, and there's, you know, there's certain special effects, you know, uh, that, that were, you know, just like classic in the first movie. And, um, you know, they pretty much had to kind of emulate them in this movie as well. Uh, and some of those effects are actually ultimately plot points, you know, that that work similarly in both films. So so there's there's a lot of like faithfulness to the characterizations and some of these small details in the first movie. But there's really no effort to make the movie over again exactly or to specifically, you know, drag the first movie into the next movie, into this film. You know, one thing that they do is um, once uh, once one of these little details that you see in both films uh, kind of clues in Angela's father. Right. Um, he. Uh, Leslie Odom Jr., by the way, he plays the father. Uh, I don't remember the little girls' names. I don't think they've been in much stuff, but they're both great in it. And if, if they had to spend as much time in that makeup as it probably meant they had to, I can't tell how much of it's digital and how much of it's, uh, um, you know, actual practical makeup. But I mean, but that stuff takes forever. And I think those little kids probably were, you know, doing some marathon acting in makeup and it's pretty impressive and i know there's laws about you know what they can actually do with kids of a certain age in terms of how long they can work and stuff but but they do a great job they're great um they're both very good in it and it's kind of one of those things where like if the kid can't do the work then this movie's not really going to come together but the 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 both the young girls are really good in it and actually the whole cast is very good um it's one of the best things about it um leslie odom jr kind of clues in on this detail that's also in the first film the light bulb goes off he starts to realize that some of the goodwill that his neighbors have been giving him makes more sense than he thought it did. He, uh, he sort of hasn't had any kind of spiritual faith, uh, since he became a widower. Um, uh, so he sort of dives in and ends up tracking down, um, Reagan's mother, uh, who is played by Ellen Burstyn, just like she was in the first film. Chris, uh, McNeil, uh, is the character's name. Is that right? Megan? No, wait. Regan McNeil, I believe. I think I said that right. And her mother's name is Chris by the great Ellen Burstyn, one of my favorite actresses. Amazing. Um, Ellen Burstyn is the woman uh, who plays the uh, speed addicted mother in uh, in the Aronofsky film. What the hell is it called? Uh, uh, 
Mm, the one with Jared Leto where everybody's on drugs. Anyway, oh, I just had it in my brain. You know the one I'm talking about. Like the one you watched and it fucking fried you and you never want to watch it again because it's just too crazy and sad. That movie. <laughs> so uh, so she's in this one as well. She's in a lot of great movies. There's a great uh, uh, psychic horror film called Resurrection that you should watch this Holloway season, holiday season if you haven't seen it. Uh, I believe that's from the 70s. It might be the early 80s, but I think it's the 70s. And it's Ellen Burstyn and Sam Shepard is also in that. That's a great movie. Check it out. Resurrection. Um, but um, I think that's what's called. <laughs> so, uh, so Ellen Burstyn is fun because she's this direct connection back to the first story and back to the old film. Um, and like I say, I just think she's a great actress. Um, and... She plays a role in this movie that's important and not just a throwaway or anything. But generally speaking, her part in the film is pretty short. You know, what I mean? and again, I think they're being smart because I think the more they tried to directly pull that first classic film into this movie, just the more glaringly you're not going to make anything like that first movie. It's impossible. You're not going to beat it. It's arguably the greatest horror film of all time. It's 50 years later, literally. And you're, you're just, it's a different culture. It's a different time. Everything that was lightning in a bottle and the greatness of William Friedkin, RIP. Um, uh, and that cast was incredible and the makeup effects were amazing for the time and fucking Max von Sydow's in it. You're not going to get, None of these motherfuckers are Max von Sydow. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, but it's a good cast. <laughs> and it's a good script. And they're all lucky that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, evidently, were smart enough to, to, you know, grab a bunch of what makes The Exorcist The Exorcist and then kind of make a movie that's its own thing. Okay. Probably the biggest difference between this movie and The Exorcist, and there's a lot of things that are different, as I've said, you know, they, they, they switch up a lot of stuff. And, um, and the theme of the movie has more to do with community, ultimately, than it does with religious faith. And the first movie is about religious faith, and it scared people so bad they wanted to become religious. <laughs> And, uh, and this movie isn't about that so much. It is. That's a part of it. And there's all these, you know, people who are characters who in their own ways are struggling with their faith. Um, uh, but it's more about community and family and people believing in one another. It's pretty well said. Give me a little like for that. Subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, but that's really kind of the bigger part of the theme here. Um, and I generally liked it. I got, it was funny because, um, when I go to these press screenings, there's, there's always a representative there from the publicist who, you know, kind of checks me in when I get there. And then, uh, when I leave, I'm supposed to stop and talk to them and tell them my general impressions. And they always write down some notes and all of that goes back to the publicist to go back to the studios and all this stuff. And uh, something happened. Something got lost in translation. It was actually really funny. I found out more about it later, but it's it's inside baseball. But uh, but uh, I ended up hearing from the publicist who I originally got the notice about the the media uh, preview from, and he's like, "Hey, Joe, like uh, I I wanted to you know something got weird with these 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 messages I got from the screening, and so I just wanted to ask you directly, like, what did you think of the movie?" And uh, I told him that the movie got, for me, it was like eight bags of popcorn out of ten with just a dribble of, of black drool on top of all of them. Um, I, I really do. I really do think the movie is like a solid B plus, you know, and um, and I was going to say the biggest difference between the two films, between the original Exorcist and this new one, is that... Um, is the tone, you know, and the tone in this one is, is a lot closer to something for the, uh, stranger things generation than the tone of the original movie, which is like 
really bleak and foreboding and ultimately like fucking terrifying, especially when it was made. Um, but even nowadays, The Exorcist is a creepy fucking movie, man. And, um, and you know, this movie is scary, but it's, but there's a lot of like fun, scary in it. And I wouldn't call The Exorcist a fun, scary movie, the original. I wouldn't call it that ever, really. Um, but this movie has a lot of like fun, scary in it. There's lots of like jump things that happen in the best way. I know that can be a cheap trick and a dumb joke and, you know, a way to cover up for the lack of actual thrills or something. But in the best possible way, this movie's got um, really good uh, fun moments. You know, there's moments of humor in it. That I don't remember really hardly any moments of humor in The First Exorcist. Um, this has, and so this is just a different kind of vibe. You know what I mean? And I, and I know that's what a lot of critics are going to hate about it, you know, cause they're going to be like, how, how dare you call this an exorcist film? I'm sure I've, people have already written that today because there's so many people who are actually kind of livid about this. Most of the reviews I've read that are like really negative are, are by, I mean, they're just by critics who are like super, um, like political minded people. Like it just seems like people who are like, uh, just like put off by the fact that this movie is ultimately about like community and religion. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else they thought it would be about. You know, the first movie is like hugely religious, so in intensely religious. And, um, this movie is, is also like that, you know, um, uh, so I don't know. I just think there's, there's people who like are back. Like I've seen people accuse this movie of having like some kind of, you know, anti-abortion messaging. And it's like, they not really like, I don't, I don't see the movie as having any kind of political agenda or anything. I think the biggest agenda of the movie is just to try to try to make another successful trilogy on the back of the greatest horror film ever made. Maybe, maybe the shining. What else goes in that category? I mean, horror films go way back. So you have to think about, like, the original Dracula, the original Frankenstein. Um, just Let's just talk about American movies, perhaps. But, like, if you guys can uh, make a comment about, like, what's your favorite horror movie. You say, what what is your favorite horror movie and what is the best horror movie? Because I think, I think we're all adults here. We understand that you might have your favorite horror movie, but you might also understand that this is actually better. Um, but you just don't like it as much. You like this one more, even though it's not as good. Um, like I, I really like the, uh, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. I can't, I'm going to watch those again. I'm, I've been, I've been thinking about them for a week now that we're in the scary movie vibe. And every year for about four years now, I'm just like, can't wait to watch those Rob Zombie movies again. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with those movies, but I, I'm just hooked on them. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the, the new Exorcist film. I definitely recommend it. If you if you if you like horror movies and you want to go see a scary movie at a theater during Halloween season, I don't I have I cannot imagine that you wouldn't have a great time at the movies watching this film. I mean, I just I'm finding it a little weird that I'm seeing so much negativity, but but I, I really do predict that this is a movie that that I'm not yeah, I'll just go ahead and say it because it's more interesting if I just go for it. Um, I predict that this film, which right now, you know, maybe the critical acclaim, you know, the critical score on, on something like, uh, an aggregator, like, um, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's going to end up maybe somewhere about between 30 and 35, I think <laughs> it, might, it might not, it might not break 30. Um, but it's going to be like there-ish. And I really think the audience score is going to be more up towards about 80. I really, I really confidently feel that way, man. When I was there last night, because it wasn't just press in, in, in a lot of the screenings like this, I go to, there's, there's rows that are reserved for press. And then there's, um, uh, the rest of the theater, which is like people who got promotional tickets of some kind, like that the grocery store had them or the, the whatever, the gym, wherever they get them, you know, or the radio gives them away or whatever it is. I don't, does anybody listen to the radio? Sorry. I feel like that was like an antiquated thing to say, but, um, uh, but, but there was lots of people like 
getting caught by these jump scares and then you just hear people all over the theater laughing you know um or like something like weird would happen man there's yeah there's like one scene where there's like there's like this all of a sudden there's just like this weird thing in the background just just for like a a, a shot and then they cut they come back and it's not there anymore and that's all it is but it's uh it, but you, it was it, like things like that would happen and you could really hear the whole theater cracking up and it wasn't the whole theater cracking up because it was like something dumb that the that they tried to do that was stupid and everybody laughed at it everybody was laughing because everybody was ready to be terrified and then these fucking little crazy things would happen or you know you know or these actual intentional jump scares would happen and and it was really it was a movie that absolutely felt like i was in a theater with a room full of people and we're all experiencing this this thing together and if a movie can do that i mean how can you call it anything but successful you know i understand that it's hard to follow up a classic i think it's extra hard to release your follow up to the classic like a couple weeks after, well, you know, a month, uh, well, a month and a half, maybe, uh, Friedkin died back in, uh, I believe it's like late August. Um, but I mean, just basically just a minute ago in terms of this movie season, you know, fucking William Friedkin died and, and now you're going to open with a film called the exorcist believer. You know what I mean? I mean, in some ways, I think that's part of the negative, um, you know, reception that it's gotten so far, you know, which is really just, again, we've only had the embargo down for like eight hours. Right. So, so, um, so we have to wait and see like what critics end up thinking, but I personally recommend it. Definitely. I definitely recommend it. And, uh, I definitely recommend it. And, and I don't think it's the greatest horror film of all time by any means, and it will never be considered for that category. <laughs> so don't get don't get carried away with what I'm saying. But do I think it's a a fun horror movie to go see this Halloween season? Yeah, I think it's required viewing this Hall Halloween season. That's what I think. I think if you're going to go see a movie between now and October 31st, this has to be one of them. If you're going to see a scary movie, this probably should be the number one scary movie. I'm not aware of another scary movie that's coming out uh, in the near future, but there has to be more though. I mean, we're, 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 we are in October. The only other terrifying movie I've heard about is the Taylor Swift concert film. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Give me a like for that one. Give me a like, give me a subscribe for that one. And, um, and hopefully you're watching this video and I've got a really cool, background if i don't then just again get ready because i'm planning to do more of these little movie videos and um i'm planning to um try to, to try to dress them up a bit so um so i appreciate y'all please again like and subscribe uh let me know if you have a different take on the film let me know what you think of the original exorcist let me know what you think about the halloween series that david gordon green did let me know what you think about those rob zombie halloween movies really any uh any kind of horror movie halloween cinema thing you want to comment below here i'd love to i'd love to hear it i like to answer those comments so um i look forward to hearing from all y'all i hope you have a great uh Halloween season. I might be back on here doing something in the next week or two. So probably, uh, I'll probably talk to you before then, but, um, I hope everybody's doing well here in Tennessee. We're, we're just starting to cool off this weekend. We're going to get some, uh, some, uh, nighttime temperatures down in like the forties, which is that's, that's, that's as cold as it's been in a long time. We, we, we had a rainy summer and kind of a milder summer for Nashville, but we still had some pretty hot, pretty hot heat and, and even just uh just a weekend ago it was like 90 degrees in the middle of the day so it's uh it's just, you know we're just at the very end of summer really um but anyway getting ready for spooky season watch a lot of spooky movies and um i'll talk to you all soon peace